Built to defend Mother Russia from a NATO assault that never came. Bloody in a war that marked the beginning of the end of an empire. The Heinz would pop up and this is like, here comes the nightmare. It now flies for the army it was created to destroy. The Mi-24 attack helicopter. They are not alert out there in the field. If they fall asleep on guard duty, or if they don't guard their left and right flanks, we'll kill them. If they fail to secure their convoys as they're driving down the road, trying to resupply their troops, we'll kill them. And if they fail to secure the area where they're evacuating the casualties and they have ambulances there, we'll kill them. We'll kill the doctors, the medics, because we're going to bring that danger, that threat of danger, to every single person here. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. This is the Op 4 wargaming base at Fort Polk, Louisiana. Op 4 is U.S. Army speak for the opposing force exercises that 50,000 GIs are put through every year. The men who train at Fort Polk are called the Blue Force. Their challenge? Survive 21 days of the most realistic combat scenarios that instructors can throw at them. Three solid weeks in the field facing an unpredictable adversary across unknown terrain. Every gun on the battlefield is fitted with a sensor to register hits. Laser tag for professionals. This is the Miles gear, and every, every uh, soldier have the Miles gear on, they also have it on their helmets. And every weapon system has a laser on it. When the soldier is successfully engaged by some sort of a weapon system, then his Miles uh, will go off in, in a tone and then that, uh, that alerts the observer controllers that, in fact, uh, the individual has been hit. At, at that point in time, he pulls out his casualty card. The casualty card may say that he was killed in action. And, and in other cases, it may say that he was wounded. And then how he was wounded, then that gives the medical folks a training aspect so that they can use that in their own, own training as we conduct the medical evacuation off the battlefield. But every system has the laser systems, the, the stinger and the Avenger has the mild laser on it. And when successfully engaged, uh, a tone will go off in the hind helicopter that will alert them that they, in fact, were shot down. The airborne enemy they face, the Red Force, are actually op for instructors, masters of the tactics and technologies of the armed forces of the former Soviet Union. We're being brought in to repel the aggressors, the blue aggressors, those running dogs. So we, we will come in and uh, come in hard, low, fast, and hit the targets and uh, as, as quickly and as hard as we can do it. This, by far, is the most fearsome weapon at the Red Team's disposal. An Mi-24 assault helicopter captured from Iraqi troops in the Persian Gulf War. Codenamed Hind by NATO planners at the height of the Cold War, this gunship transport was built by the thousands to kill American tanks and troops on the plains of Europe in World War III. Instead, it has seen combat in countless proxy wars and brush fires across the third world, and now serves as a teaching instrument for the soldiers it was created to slay. Most of these gunners, this is the first time they've seen a Hind. They've seen an Apache, and they know how the Apache attack helicopter works. But this is Hind, it's something different. You know, this thing is gonna take a good attack run, it's gonna start coming screaming at you, and all of a sudden it break out of the trees, and there it is, and it's shooting the missiles, and it's shooting its machine guns, and then it's gone. They fly 
in the most heavily armored helicopter gunship the world has ever seen. Hind pilots sit in a titanium tub built to withstand point-blank hits from 37-millimeter anti-aircraft shells. Built strong, and there's steel in this aircraft. There's a heavy gauge aluminum. There's a lot of titanium. This is a very well-built aircraft with rolled armor plating on the side. It's a you know, strong, uh, tough, heavy, uh, durable, uh, very much like, uh, like its homeland. The windscreens they look through are bulletproof. Even if the glass were riddled with 50 caliber machine gun slugs, these two men would survive and probably complete their mission. The cockpit itself is a large, roomy cockpit. The switches are simple, clearly marked. It's air conditioned. It's got a nice fan up in front for airflow, keeping it across your face. And in stress, you, you like to have airflow across your face. It's overpressurized, and it's chemically and biologically filtered air, so you're in a safe environment till you have holes knocked in it. So it's quite a large, comfortable cockpit. The Soviets, and now Russians, have never put much stock in high-tech weaponry. The design strategy that helped them smash the Nazi war machine remains intact. Overwhelmed sophistication with sheer numbers and brute strength. This machine, designed by the Mill Company and first flown in 1971, is no exception to the simplicity in design rule. Nearly two times larger than America's Apache gunship, the Hind has no real Western counterpart. Soviet military doctrine combines the speed of an attack helicopter with the size of a transport. The result, a hybrid. Larger than most World War II bombers and at 210 miles per hour, the fastest military chopper ever made. 30 miles per hour faster than the Apache. I wouldn't say it's a sneaky uh, type of aircraft. It, 26,000 pounds is not going to sneak up on pretty near anybody. But it is quiet in comparison to its size. And it moves, we move at a high speed, attack speed between 120 and 140 knots, 50 to 100 feet above the ground. And a rolling terrain, it's very difficult to detect. And it can be on you before you know it. This morning, we expect the MI-24 Hind to conduct an air attack. The air attack route will go up along the east side of the brigade sector. It will fly north, proposed targets at Firepoint 706, 705, 704, and the brigade supply area. On this day, the soldiers of the 25th Infantry Division face a difficult job. Plunge 10 miles into enemy territory and hold a riverbed running through their sector of the map. Along the way, they will be subject to ambush and attack by helicopter-borne Reds. Hind pilots do not fly alone. Included in the Red Force are Soviet Mi-17 Hiplite and Mi-8 attack helicopters. To defend against these threats, each platoon has its own Avenger team. A Humvee fitted with Mach 2 Stinger surface-to-air missiles. Hind pilots hug the trees, seek their prey, and strike swiftly. This gives each team an average of just three seconds to get off a shot. If this were war, these men would be dead. This is definitely the most realistic training that, uh, that I've ever seen in, uh, in 14 years in the Army, so this, uh, this is great. In our home station, we really don't have aircraft that engage back at us, so uh, we'll be on our toes as to more of what we're doing. Okay, he got us. Up four pilots fly five to six times daily. For the Stinger teams below, this constant cycle of attack forces them to sharpen their defensive skills to a fine edge. Okay, 2-7 just shot four more rockets and 12 individuals getting out of the MIA. 